I, I gave my life some, 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 some when I was 17 years old. But the consciousness of the call around me had been since I was 12 and 9. In fact, I can think back and retrospect with hindsight and tell you since when I was 8, I knew there was something special and different about me. And why would you, why would I say so? I always found myself growing up from 8, 9, 10, 11. It grew very stronger when I was 13. This message would make sense to our younger ones. Okay? So to reach you guys and then to reach the older ones. At 13, from 8, I knew I was different. Why? I spent most of, I wish I can leave the mic. I spent most of my time in the room alone. My brothers were watching the Mal Malbro, the Django. How many people remember the Django? Jesus, a new generation. <laughs> How many people rem remember Jugunu? How many people know Yado Kibara? How many people know Kabi Kabi? I'm talking about the Indian films way back. And there was this uh, Deski Nambari. How many people remember that? Just a few people. Now, yes, most of the time when my brothers, my siblings were watching, there was like a pulling away. Somebody said pulling away. And the Hebrew word for pulling down is, is barak, which is blessing. Somebody say barak. Barak is a Hebrew word for blessing. And it means to what? Pull down. Somebody say pull down. And that means you can be blessed but you need to pull the blessings down. So it's different for you to just bear a blessing without manifesting that blessing because there is a human effort in a blessing. You can't carry a blessing and do nothing. Like he said, sit all, all, all day in the room, eat food and pray and don't do anything and expect yourself to be blessed. Come on, yes, you'll be blessed, right? You will carry the blessing and carry the potential, but you will never carry the fullness and the physical manifestation of that blessing. And maybe you die for a blessed man. So even in prophecy, there is a human effort in a prophetic word coming to pass in your life. There's an effort. If you don't find the word, if you don't pray, if you don't connect with your spiritual tribe, that means the people that carry your DNA, that are your, 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 your genealogy spiritually, that interpret and understand you. If you're with the wrong people, I tell you, it takes 40 years instead of 40 days. And so I found myself alone in the room. While they were watching those movies, I was in the room. And there was a staring in me to say, hey, there are things in me I knew. I couldn't put picture to them. I couldn't put words. I just knew there's different. There's a different. I, I see them like my family, but they are, they are strangers. I don't know if I, if I, how many people feel that sometimes. Just a tiny Joseph's and family feel like that. You just feel there's something different. That's destiny calling you. It, it continued until the days of secondary school. It grew so strong and the surge and the energy was strong. And it got to a time that ah, I knew it was sound. God was calling me to pioneer a genre of sound. It got so strong. And then I started writing songs and, and the songs were not the normal kind of songs. And I did the most unthinkable thing. Somebody say unthinkable. Say it again too. What I did was what my daughter told me three days ago that she's going to do what daddy did. And I looked at her. I said, what did I do? Just to be sure she got it. And she says, I'm going to lock myself, stop my ears from hearing radio and watching TV for three years. I did that. When I was seven, between 16, 17, 18, I shot myself from radio, from TV, for three and a half years, I was like a madman. Someone may ask, what was Dabs looking for? These are some of my classic stories of the man you see today. What was I looking for? I was fasting. I 
didn't want the sound I would create to be contaminated by something strange or something common. I needed something pure and innocent from the heavens. So the prize was to block yourself from the natural so that the spiritual will open. And that period, God gave me sounds. Somebody say sounds. About 8,000 sounds that I'm yet to release. And he calls them the sealed songs. That you release them when you're older. And yesterday, too, yesterday, it was Joe, yesterday in the studio, I got a yes from God to release things that are hidden for 30 years. 19. That was when I want to challenge you guys here. Go and do research. Go back in time, 1999. Ask the sounds that existed that time. I knew there was a DNA of reformation. Being a reformer, an apostolic reformer in me. So the path was different. It cost me my school. I had to say no to my parents. At 200 level, 1995. I told them, mom, dad, I think this is not my path. I want to put my energy while I'm young to something I know I love doing. Hey, warfare, Jesus. Because my dad was a historian and was a conk, strong educationist and my mom. So I remember I left home. I went to Lagos. I stayed with the current uh, commissioner of lands and survey, Gay Barista Gay, in Lagos, yes, for some time. My, there was no phones. They didn't know where Dabs was. They were afraid maybe I committed suicide. But after six months, I came back. And they were looking at me like a ghost. There were no phones. 1995, 96. And then for three years, God hid me again, guys. And what was inside me was a sound, an album that changed the Hausa, the African fusional northern sound up till now. The Favor of God album. What better the Jeremiah gangs and that generation of guys that are changing was from that separation, that discipline, that self-discovery, that identity, that realization that there was a sound in me. And beyond that sound, now it's getting global now. 